Hi, Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe. Today, I'm very excited to introduce to you an entirely new class of digital fabrication tool. I'm talking about the Meku Multiplier. This machine brings industrial level pressure forming to your workbench. Now, when you think of an industrial class pressure forming machine, you might imagine something like this. And in the past, you'd have been right. Meku is the first company to be able to bring this kind of powerful technology into a format that will sit on your workbench. This is the Meku Multiplier, and it truly is in a class of its own. This machine allows you to produce extremely high quality parts in a fraction of the time that it would take from other digital fabrication methods. This machine allows you to produce parts with astounding detail. And I'm talking details down to as little as one micron. At the core of the Meku multiplier is a heated pressure chamber, which is capable of heating materials up to 200 degrees Celsius in under two minutes. It then applies pressure of up to 60 PSI, which creates about five tons of force to create extremely high quality impressions of your objects. In order to achieve these capabilities, the multiplier is constructed with industrial grade components that will stand up to repeated heat and pressure, producing high quality parts again and again. It has a high quality touch panel that walks you through each step of the process, making it easy to use even for people who don't have any prior experience with forming technologies. The multiplier also features an automatic leveling system so that while your materials are heated, Pressure and suction on the top of the chamber can hold that material exactly level so that it doesn't droop down like would normally happen when you're heating material like this. The touch panel makes it very easy. You select the material and thickness that you're working with, and it will guide you through the process of loading that material and preparing that material for use. You'll see as the pressure chamber builds up pressure, and then the heating element as it comes up to temperature to prepare that material for forming. At the appropriate time, you'll be instructed to place your template inside the machine. And when everything is ready, you'll be instructed to lower the lid of the multiplier, creating your form. The whole process takes less than 10 minutes from start to finish. The multiplier uses a semi-spherical forming area. Your work area is about 380 millimeters across and up to about 160 millimeters tall. The exact usable area depends on the shape of your object, so that wider, shorter objects can use more of that horizontal area, while narrower objects can use more of the vertical area. The multiplier also has network connectivity, allowing them to do over-the-air firmware updates. Now this means that in the future, additional types of functionality can be introduced to this machine. While nothing specific has been announced yet, you can use your imagination when you think about a machine like this that has controllable heat and pressure, there are some very exciting things that might become available in the future without having to change any of your hardware. Each one of the Meku materials that's available has a ready to use profile, so you don't have to worry at all about configuring settings. Nothing needs to be tweaked, you just select the type and thickness of material that you're working with and the machine does the rest. It could not be easier. So just like with 3D printing, the power and versatility of the Meku multiplier comes from the available materials that you have to work with. At the time of launch, there were three materials available, but since then several more have been added and more are on the way. So there will be a constantly expanding library of materials for you to choose from, each one with ready to use profiles. So let's take a look at some of those materials and talk about what you can do with them. Hips sheets are available in one millimeter thickness. This is a recyclable material with a smooth satin finish. It's great for rapid prototyping and product packaging. PET G sheets are available in one millimeter thickness. This is a food safe and transparent material, making it ideal for food packaging or transparent parts. EVA sheets are available in 1.5 millimeter thickness. This is a highly flexible material, so it's great for producing flexible, shock-absorbent parts that are easy to recycle. It's also great for producing molds that can be used to cast resin parts. It's also possible to use this material for two-part injection molding. You can see an example of that here. PMMA sheets are available in three millimeter thickness. This is a transparent material, 
excellent for producing tough and clear parts with good UV stability. ABS sheets are available in 4 mm thickness. This material produces tough, impact-resistant parts with excellent surface appearance, making it ideal for producing end-use parts. UHMW, also known as UHMWPE, stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. This is a thermoplastic material available in 3 mm thickness, characterized by a high strength to weight ratio, excellent abrasion resistance, low friction coefficient, and impact resistance. This is excellent for parts like gears, cycling helmets, shin guards, dock bumpers, and other such parts. To start creating parts in the Meku multiplier, you first need to create your template. The template can be created in a variety of ways, including using ready-to-use parts that are made from wood or metal or other materials that will hold up to the heat and pressure of this machine, but most common is to use 3D printing. Now, if you're using an FDM 3D printer, the kind that uses filament, you'll want to use nylon. That's the best material due to its strength and heat resistance. It'll hold up well even after repeated uses within the Meku multiplier. Keep in mind, however, that because this machine picks up so much detail, you will see the layering lines that are produced from FDM 3D printing in your final part. The thinner you go on your layers, the less visible they'll be but of course that means it'll take longer to print. If you're really looking to get the maximum quality from your final part, you'll want to look to a resin printer, and you'll want to use a high temp resin so that your template will hold up in the Meku multiplier's pressure chamber. As an example, that's what we did for this test part that we used to create this PMMA light fixture. Because we wanted maximum transparency, we used a high temp resin to create the template, and then formed the PMMA sheet over that, and as you can see, it produced a nice, smooth part for maximum transparency. So we've just scratched the surface here, and I hope to have other videos for you soon to dive into various workflows and applications for the Meku multiplier. But hopefully this has been enough to get your creative juices flowing and get you excited about the possibilities of working with a machine like this. As always, please reach out if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when we release new videos. Thanks for watching.